Turns out the police in London and New York are investigating allegations of sexual assault against the powerful Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein. The news comes after another actress accused him of disturbing behavior. In an Instagram post, Kate Beckinsale said when she was only 17, Weinstein offered her alcohol during their first meeting in his hotel room. Dozens of women have accused him of rape or sexual harassment. Weinstein reportedly seeking treatment for sex addiction at a facility in Arizona tonight. This is what we're told. One of the women accusing Weinstein used her Twitter account to rally support for other victims. But tonight, Twitter suspended Rose McGowan's account. The social media site says it blocked her because one of her tweets included personal information of someone else, and that violates the terms of service. Her account is now unlocked after many complaints by people online. A lot of discussions happening at work within friends about sexual harassment. Joining us off script tonight, Mary David, former prosecutor, Chrissy Horansky, author, activist for women and girls, Tom Spiegel, whose law firm focuses on protecting employee rights in the workplace, right? That's A correct. lot of sexual harassment cases. I'm afraid so. Okay, yeah, right. I, I want to start with you, Mary. We, we were talking on the phone, okay? Yes. And you were telling me one of the reasons women don't come forth is because there there is no law that's uh, it says sexual harassment, and here are the violations of that law, right? That's correct. There is no criminal charge against sexual harassment, and unless a victim can make a case that there was some sort of assault or they felt a threat of serious imminent bodily injury or false imprisonment, indecent exposure, unless it rises to that level, there's really nothing criminally they can do. And so their only option, really, if they want to seek legal recourse, is to go through the civil court system. And, and to go to civil court, what do you need? What kind of ammunition do you need to get some kind of judgment against somebody? It can't be your word against his word or, or her word, right? And oftentimes that's what victims are faced with. There might not be any physical evidence. There could just be his word against her word and no other witnesses that are present. So there, it makes it really difficult for a victim to even win those kinds of cases. But then they also have these legal fees that have accumulated and court costs as a result. And so even if they want to go forward, sometimes the only thing that they can do is try and get some sort of monetary damage. Okay, okay. Personally, have, have either of you experienced the kind of harassment, the kind of things we're talking about on the job, workplace, that sort of thing? I think we live in a culture in which young women are regularly subjected and we definitely have these instances that are really egregious and clear examples of abuse of power, but I think it's important to also recognize that we live in a society in which this often happens. If you talk to young women, if you talk to your friends, your sisters, your daughters, you'll find that this is often the case, but that it is very, not only prevalent, but something that exists in a culture of shame and silence and is often swept underneath the rug. Right. When it comes to you, the most terrible cases, I suppose, when they really have a criminal case, right? What, 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 what do you do? Where do you go Well, I mean, it, it do, you don't necessarily have to have a criminal case, criminal case, Bruce. Um, uh, the, the standards, as Mary would tell you, are different for criminal than in, sure. in, in civil cases. And I think the important thing for for women to know, particularly for, for young women, um, and it does happen a lot to young women starting early in their careers, and I have two young daughters, I hope it's different when they reach your age, um, is that you should, you should report it to HR, right? That's your first line of protection. Now you should assume, sadly, and there are a bunch of great HR people out there, so, but you should assume that they are not going to help. All right, but the reason that assume you- Assume HR is not, not going to why help. Why wouldn't they help? Because a lot of times they're there to protect the company. Okay. Right, and we saw it happen in the Weinstein case. Right, there were there were reports, and uh, as I understand okay, it, no help from HR. Yeah. Where do you go from? Yeah, after so that? so, but the reason that you do that is because then you have an extra layer of protection under anti-retaliation law, right? Because so if you report and then you retaliated against, that's an entirely separate claim from the sexual harassment claim, which, as Mary mentioned, can can be difficult but not impossible. Mm -hmm. And he said, she said, stories can you can win those kinds of cases, but. To, in order to have the strongest legal protection, report it to HR and then file a charge with the EEOC, which you can do for free. Mm -hmm. You can go to their website, eeoc.gov. You don't need a lawyer to do that. That will give you the strongest legal protection. But the real world advice also is, is that that's gonna make your life very difficult 
right? So I'm self-serving, but you sh I think you should get an attorney at that point. It makes, your, it makes your life difficult, and that's the reason why a lot of women don't proceed, correct? Who wants to be put through that without some certainty you're going to get some recourse in the end? And you don't have that, right? Absolutely. And the other thing is if a victim does come forward, then they also have to face extra scrutiny in the workplace. Anyone else who finds out about what happened is suddenly going to have questions about their credibility. And it's also concerns about whether from that point is that going to harm your reputation is future it going to harm future employment opportunities Harvey Weinstein he let it let it be clear you know I, I can affect your career and future companies prospective employers they don't want their name necessarily associated with all of this as essentially baggage that comes with a victim who has this history behind them that may in some way taint their brand or their reputation. What, 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 what do you advise young women to do if like right now they start talking? Do you tell them, get your camera out, record stuff, oh, absolutely. start documenting? Absolutely, right? We all, all of us have cell phones now that are recording devices. You know, that's, that's evidence that can be used in court. And we see that not infrequently now where people will come in and they will have actually you know, audio tape. What else? Tell somebody immediately about it. Does that help yeah, your case? Uh, you know, uh, do the James Comey thing, right? Keep a keep a, a, a contemporaneous record. Write a diary. Understand that it can. You're going to have to turn that over, but that can help. Yeah. You know, that when as soon as this happened, I went home and wrote this note. Okay. I have this video recording, or I have somebody else who's willing to come in and talk on my behalf, a witness essentially. And, and then maybe some investigative work. Try to find some other women uh, that have the same. Sure. Okay. The more right. the merrier. All right. Good advice. Thank you all very much for coming in.